Tonight, there is a growing political battle between Texas and New York as Governor Greg Abbott continues to send thousands of migrants from the border to Manhattan and Washington, D.C. Now, Texas is sharing our pain with the rest of the country. This man from Venezuela has no idea why he was bused to New York City. Things started picking up towards late July and uh, early August. We started getting buses coming in. Um, and then around September, October, we started getting a lot more buses. And about eight to 10 buses a day we were getting. Um, and at first, you start thinking about it, you're like, wow, why they're just like sending these people out here with no real communication as to what's going on. And when I started thinking about it now, this was like a cry for help. At first, it was like, oh wow, so many Venezuelans are coming. City of El Paso is joining Governor Abbott's push to bus migrants up to New York City. They've chartered a bus to carry dozens of migrants who arrived from Venezuela. Thousands of Venezuelans are now being turned away at the U.S. border. We have people coming from Ecuador. We have people coming from Peru. We have a lot of people coming from Africa. We have people coming from Afghanistan, from Russia. What happens is that through via the Port Authority, the buses that were coming in and in, in the beginning, when it became like a media frenzy, it was a lot more people coming from Venezuela. So that became the focus and the target. They stopped this particular group from entering, but we still had an influx of people coming from all over. Good morning and happy holidays to y'all. It is December 25th. This Sunday morning, we have a bus right here early in the morning from Texas. When I started thinking about it now, um, I look back and I see and I hear about how many thousands of people are coming through the border at one time. Unfortunately, they were using people as a political pawn and they were basically sending them to major cities like Chicago and New York to get attention as to what's going on. Before we begin busing illegal immigrants up to New York, it was just Texas and Arizona that bore the brunt of all of the chaos and all the problems that come with it. Now the rest of America is understanding exactly what is going on. Aquí estamos. Este es el segundo bus del día. El bus viene de Denver, Colorado. It's legal to be able to have people travel from place to place with their permission. One thing that's not legal is if you're just putting people on a bus and not telling them where they're going, and that's kind of a form of kidnapping if you're just loading people up on a bus or on a plane and just sending them off. For regular native New Yorkers, it's difficult to make it. Imagine people that come here with nothing. They gave up everything. It was us, the grassroots organizations, that were communicating and networking with our friends, with other organizations, to see how can we feed the people that are coming in, how can we clothe them, how can we bring them resources and services that they need, and how can we treat them with love and respect and empathy, um, and treat them like human beings that they are. Sometimes their family members have made it here to New York. They communicate with us that their family members are in detention centers and we communicate and we try to figure out where they are exactly and how can we reunite them. One of the challenges is finding community to actually have people understand that these people are coming not to take their jobs but more to contribute to society. And the second thing is the fact that they're not able to work when they get here because they need work authorization papers and that's a whole nother federal thing. It's, it's very political. Sometimes people forget that this country was built off of the backs of immigrants and then sometimes people don't even know their history um, because history gets erased. If you weren't born here 500 years ago, then you too are an immigrant. We're all part of a solution. And this is just another wave, another chapter in all of our lives, and we can't ignore it. It's happening, it's here, so that when people look back 
at history and they say, wow, what happened during that time? Who was involved? What kind of things were being done? And what kind of things can they learn from what we're doing? It's about who steps up during that moment so that we as all as human beings can learn from each other. Look for the people that are out there really helping. Um, I think that you should do your research um, to find out what organizations are really doing the work. Um, don't get caught up in political nonsense. When the lights and the cameras are not around, it's the grassroots organizations that are on the ground still continuing to do this work. And we always need as much support as possible.